July 7th select board meeting to order at 5.01 in the afternoon. And we have David Canamella. Is that right, David? That's correct, yes. Uh, as a guest on the Zoom, and I am on the Zoom uh, also, and the town of Middlesex is on the Zoom, but nobody's there. And well, town of, Middles, town of Middlesex is Sarah. Right. And I then know. I'm running the other, and we have Liz, Bill, Steve, and Sandy Levine here, and Orca. Okay. 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 Good. Well, our first item of uh, so, are there any amendments to the agenda, Sarah? Uh, no. Okay. So, the first item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Lots in the treasurer's report. Dorinda, you are on. Okay. The first order of business is to ratify the um, ARPA funds. And we have to appoint a representative and a contact person. Um, I put the cart ahead of the horse and I had already filled out all the information. So the initial paperwork got filled out with me being the representative and Peter Hood being the secondary contact. This meeting is being recorded. So we just need to, there's three motions that have to be made um, that Sarah had sent through. Uh, just assigning these people as the representative. Yeah, leaving it the way it is. With it, and, yeah, because yeah. I don't know how to go about changing it. Yeah, and it, it makes sense to me that you yeah. you are the one when you would be drawing down the, the plan. So um, I'll make that motion that. Um, first, you have to do it. You have to go in order. Yeah. So the first, well, the first, the first <laughs> motion. Listed. You go ahead, Dan. Okay. I move that the town of Middlesex accept the CLFRF from the treasury along with the award terms and conditions and assurances of compliance with the civil rights requirements. I'll second that. Right. Is that how you wanted it? That's, 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 that's how they told us to do it. Okay. okay. Is, there a second, uh, is there a second to that motion? Steve. I seconded that, Peter. Okay, thank you, Steve. It's been moved and seconded. I'm not gonna read that all over again. You've all got it in front of you. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion number two. Anybody else want to? I'll make a motion that we designate uh, Treasurer Dorinda Kroll as the authorized representative to sign and award terms and conditions. And is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay, and that was Bill? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so what it's been moved and seconded to designate Treasurer Dorinda Quarrell as the authorized representative to sign award terms and conditions. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the third motion. Liz, would you like to do it? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we designate Peter Hood as secondary contact for the town's award of the Coronavirus Local Fiscal Recovery Funding, AKA CLF RF. I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> so we're all on that. <laughs> on we go, right? Yep. Um, all those in favor of designating Peter Hood as the secondary contact for the town awards of CLFRF funds, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We're good. Uh, I do I'm have good. I do have one one question. Um, yes. We talked about setting up a separate account for this money, Dorinda. Right. So there's two ways you can do it. You can either we could move it into one of the accounts like we have the special funds in or it says um, the league came through and said all we really had to do was set up a special account number. But I'd rather see it into a, an account all by itself until we determine how it's going to be handled. Yeah, I'm old school. I like the, okay. I like the separate account. 
Yeah. Anybody right. disagree with that? No, I think that's the way to go. Yep. Everybody agrees. Okay. Okay. And then the second question is this money might be coming in fairly soon, right? They originally said we would see, they thought we would see the first, well, again, it's in two different pieces. There was a local right. piece and a federal piece. Right. The local piece, they said we thought we would see the first part in June, but we have yep. not received it as of yet. Okay. Okay. Well, if we can, it would be great to get the account set up so when that money comes in, we can put it right in that account. We don't have to... Put yeah, it, it won't be. It. It'll happen quickly. Okay, thank you, Dorinda. Thank you. Okay, next item of business under the treasurer is approving the $280,500 loan from the Community National Bank to last no more than 15 years to pay for the new town grader as approved by the town voters March 2nd, 2021. Action likely. I read through the first couple of pages of that. I did not read through the whole thing, but it looked to me like pretty standard boilerplate, nothing to be concerned about. It's the same type of loan that we usually do, but the interest was what, two, four, five? Two, four, yeah. five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it. Uh, I always worry, I always worry that they have slide some kind of fishy language <laughs> in there, but I guess on some level we've got to trust them, right? I mean, we don't want to have our attorney review this, is what I'm asking. I, no. Well, we don't have time. I mean, well, I a, just got... There's I got always that. time, but I, but I, you know, I mean, I say I didn't read through the rest of it. I skimmed through the rest of it. It all sounded like the typical stuff to me. I didn't see anything. Rob, we've never no, had, yeah, no. we've never had anybody review it before. Scary, I think. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So we need a motion on this. Yes, we do. Um, so I move that we approve the two hundred eighty thousand five hundred dollar loan from Community National Bank to last no more than fifteen years to pay for the new town grader as approved by voters at March second, twenty twenty one town meeting. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, is there a second? I just seconded it. Liz did. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't mention this before. I meant to and I didn't. So we are certain that that is the amount we want to borrow. We don't want to put any fund balance money, any other funds into this and have less debt. No, we want to borrow the full amount, and yep. then if we want to pay off early, that's the way we do it. Yeah, but that okay. is the way, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. This is, a, this is a risk about being home. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So all those in favor of approving the $280,500 loan from Community National uh, for a term not more than 15 years to buy the new town grader. Please say aye. 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 Any aye? Any opposed? Unanimous again. Thank you. Any uh, any news, Victor, on the arrival of the grader? What? what? Victor is muted, but I can tell you. Here yeah. Goes. Yeah. It, Peter. Yes. It is in the barn. It's in the garage. Oh. In our garage. Yeah, I've been there a couple of weeks. Okay, hot damn. Would have been nice if somebody have the touch the truck event. Yeah. I heard. When are we doing that? We're gonna have a touch the greater event. Right, Vic? Can you I don't know what you mean. They haven't touched it. <laughs> <laughs> like what that's greater? part of our um as as part of our field trips for our um capital spending plan, we are going to invite people to come to see the new greater. Mm. Remember Susan Clark talked to you about that, Vic? I do. I do, yeah, yeah. I heard you were excited. Yeah. What's that? I heard you were excited about that. Oh, okay. I'll contribute. I'll contribute a bottle of champagne to pour over its bow. How about that? Well, when do you uh, empty bottle it? You can yeah. drink a little drink of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can talk more to you. Oh. 
How would you like to do that, Peter, and select board? I don't know. We need to win her. Uh, really, it's in Liz's. Uh... I mean, you yeah, want us so... just to leave? You want us to leave the grader outside the uh, gate and let them look at it? The original idea with uh, Susan was uh, on some um, uh, night that they had the bandstand, but I think didn't they have one last week? No, uh, it starts, starts next on the Wednesday. 14th. Okay. Yeah, yeah the bandstand could be a good idea, um, or having it be its own, um, like we did the fire station, how we did a visit to the fire station and people were invited to come and see, the, talk with the fire department and stuff like that. You mean the um, fire station in the village or the fire station up but down garage? We did it at the, at the, um, the village, right. the main fire station. We already had an event. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't we, I mean, so here's the, here's the question for me, everyone, you know, and I'm sorry I couldn't be there, but uh, I thought the idea of having people being able to walk through the fire station, look around, see what was going on was a good thing. The problem with having the Kiss the Greater event and coincident with the concert is there's probably not going to be time to have people walk through the town garage and peer at all the other stuff. So what we could possibly do is do it before the concert starts, something like, um, what time do the concert start? Six, like do it at five or something like that. That way you get people um, coming and, I mean, I think that would probably be the best thing to get the most people. Okay. But I'll talk about it at our meeting. We have a meeting so, on Monday okay. for the capital so, spending so, plan. Yep. Um, and but that's going to mean, that's going to mean more than uh just having the greater park out front we're going to have the town garage open and available we'll probably have the whole town garage open and and you know vic and 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 maybe um shane there to answer questions that people may have similar to what we did um right. paul zabriskie was supposed to be organizing that and then the then the new grader sort of became its own like oh let's have a greater day but it could be the same yeah, thing it should be the same thing Greater and town um, garage visit at the same time. I agree. Yeah, you know, maybe let kids sit in the greater, that kind of thing. Yeah. And touch a truck. That's what they used to do in Montpelier. Kids could go and sit in the truck and touch it. Yeah, but see, I, I, I mean, I'm actually going to have my grandchildren there. That's great. My my grandsons would love to sit in the greater, but. Um, that doesn't sound like a 20 minute thing to me. That sounds like, I just wonder if an hour is enough. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's and not. Question. Depends on who shows up. And especially if it's before the bandstand, it might be, you know, you might get a lot of people. So I don't know, but we'll talk about that. That's okay. what we can All talk right. about that. Enough, we're getting off track. I apologize. Yeah. I, just, I just was thinking about it. Uh, so uh, next on Dorinda's hit parade is reviewing and approving the annual financial management questionnaire action likely. Um, I did review it. I only had one comment, Dorinda, but I didn't expect you to change it. Oh, yeah. And this goes, this is just a formality. That form goes nowhere. Right. It sits in our file. And if they want to see it, it's a self audit thing. Right. And it's only if it's asked for. So nobody even, nobody's asked for it, I guess, in the past. Only the auditor asks for stuff like that, right? Right. Now well, that's the next, that's the next one. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So do we, do we actually need to approve that, Dorinda? He's already signed it. Peter, and sent it back, I gave it to you. Well, it's, um, it needs to be no, okay. okay. Move approval of the uh, annual financial management questionnaire. And is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor of approving the annual financial management questionnaire, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We've approved it. Uh, reviewing and approving the memo of understanding from Bachelor Associates as to the audit of the FY 20 town financial records action likely. Anybody so have moved. any questions about that or concerns? Uh, Phil's moved it. I'll second. Okay. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I do think, uh, so it, we passed that. I do think next year is probably the time to consider putting it out, at least consider it. Right, and that was gonna be, that was the thought process for this year, but based on everything that was going on, I decided to stay where we were oh, at. I agree, I agree. This is not the year to be trying to do that. Yeah. No, I agree. What do we did that? Do we usually do for a three year contract? No, or it's year no, year? it's just a year to year. Oh, so you can send okay. it out as often as you want, really. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the next item is reviewing new contract with national insurance company as underwriter providing life and disability coverage action likely. Um, I have a question about that. Who, who actually handles, who's the broker who handles that for us? Well, we were paying Lincoln, Lincoln Life before. Yeah, but, but it, there must be a broker involved. Somebody's, somebody's getting paid for this. Yeah. Um, all I see is a bill that we pay every month for Lincoln Life and then this new one. Can, oh, well, I think it's through the league because they sent me the original paperwork. Okay, it is so through the league? It's through the league, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it just, it just seems a little weird to me that this, I, if it's the league, I understand. If it, if it was something else where they just presume that we're going to approve this from change from one company to another with no information, no... I thought it was a little weird, but if it's through the league, then it makes sense. They've changed carriers. Right. Yes, it came through the league, and um, and it's not a matter of changing carriers. Lincoln Life sold to this company, so it's just new owners of the company. Yeah, no, I, I understand, but it, it amounts to a change of, uh, anyway. Right. I think right. it's fine. I just, I was a little confused, that's all. And there but, is, they um, provided as you look in the paperwork a pretty comprehensive um, listing of how they arrive at the amounts compared to what we were getting from Lincoln Life. Yep. So that's something when we come to budget time, you may we had discussed this previously that we may want to readdress how much um, the town pays and, yep. and how much the employee contributes. Yep, yep, yep. No, I saw that. Yeah, I'm not aware that we've ever had that before either. So No, I'm not. Maybe it's a good thing. So, um, do we need to actually approve this or is it just, it's a done deal, isn't it? Uh, basically, it's a done deal. I mean, I guess you can just approve that you're aware of the new contract or something to that effect. So it's just in the minutes that you're aware of that. Yeah, That's I, would just, I would just put it in the minutes that we reviewed the contract uh, from the league for the town's employee life and disability coverage. Yeah. I don't think we need to, if there's nothing to approve, we can't change anything. Okay, and then is there anybody, does anyone need to get anybody to sign signatory to say, you're on one of these, Linda? Yeah, uh, uh, I believe, I signed that, I believe, didn't I? Do you have? Well, you could, uh, signature, it looks like they need two signatures of authorized signer for employer, you're one. Oh, and I don't know, oh, yeah. I mean, we can get a second signature, it doesn't matter. We can have some, one in, you wanna designate, um, somebody here to sign on behalf of the board? Yes. And who will that be? I would say Liz Sharp. Okay. Is that okay with you, Liz? <laughs> You're signing our, our employee life and yes, disability. Yes, I'm happy to do that for the Liberty Council. Okay. Liz, okay, thank you. And that and the other one. Same thing. Because uh, if you can get her number, go around them, you're around. Because if that if that way, um, you can look at Peter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anyways, those are about Florence. Um, signature pages. I have a couple more things under the treasurer. Um, I just wanted you to be aware that we did receive payment from Matt Oates for Welch Park. 
So, but with the same day that was received, another bill came in for a permit. But it's all good. So I, uh, just, just to give everybody a quick update, I had a uh, conversation with John Riley, and uh, I also had a conversation with uh, Rob Halpert, our town attorney. John Riley represents Welch Park. Um, Rob Halpert, as you know, represents us. And I said to both of them, it was the desire of the town to consider withdrawing from Welch Park. And the two of them are supposed to get together and come back with a recommendation of how we could do that if we wanted to do it. I did say to Rob, you know, there could be various fallback positions if somebody really wanted to take over the financial management. Um, I would consider, or we might consider that as a fallback position, but our preference would be to get out. Yes. So um, they're chewing on that. I will, uh, I will uh, follow up with them. Rob did not seem to think it was as impossible as, as John Riley thinks it is, but uh, he hadn't talked to John yet. He was going to talk to John and get back to me. So we'll see what happens. But I fulfilled my promise. I made my phone calls. There you go. Uh, and I will say, Matt was very right on top of it after I called him. He kind of, you know, he kept following up with me to make sure we received the check and everything. So Perfect. I will say that was a good thing. Yes. Um, so one other thing is in the orders tonight, there is a bill from Lafayette Signs or Lafayette some engineering, I don't know what they're called, mm -hmm. Lafayette something. And it was to install the speed signs in yeah. Putnamville. And so it turns out that it was a 48, almost a $4,900 bill, which was oh. on budgeted because all that ever got approved by the voters was were the signs isn't it isn't it ironic that the cost of installing the signs is almost the same as the cost of the signs right peter uh, yes i would like to add you will have some more money because they're on the south end is out of uh, is not in compliance we got an email from, from, from the uh, state of Vermont, and we did not follow our permit, according to them. Huh. Oh so my God. Right so now, have, right now, your light. Move it? What's that? We have to take it out and move it? Yeah, that's only $1,500, $2,000. Holy crap. <laughs> Excuse me. So. Left I don't know. The one on the south end, I mean, I didn't go check. It's supposed to be shut off. They told us to. they wanted it shut off immediately because the why they put little flashing white lights on them but don't want us to use them because somebody might have an elect, uh, what do you call it, seizure from looking at it. Um, so we had to shut it off because uh, we. Uh, they said that we were uh, in violation. Uh, not quite clear why a white light would give you a uh, seizure, but a yellow one won't. Uh, down in Montpelier, the little yellow ones are flashing all the time at the crosswalk. Maybe. So, I mean, does this mean that we bought the wrong signs somehow? They sold us the wrong signs? No, no, we didn't. We didn't. No, but there's a permit process to go through, and we gave a pro they gave us a permit. And uh, they told us how they wanted it. It's a 29 page permit. And they told us what, how they wanted it done. And uh, they didn't do it that way. They want to, uh, one thing they want is a speed, uh, a 35 mile an hour speed sign attached to the uh, flashing post. I mean, that's part of, that's part of the standard for doing that. And then the uh, one on the uh, south end is in the 50 mile an hour zone and it's easier to move it than to uh, change the speed limit. <laughs> and isn't that, isn't that Lafayette's <clears throat> responsibility or did we put the stake in the ground and tell them where to put it? Uh, that's debatable. <laughs> that's debatable. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, the young man told Shane that uh, the other thing we were supposed to have a meeting, a pre-construction meeting 
prior to any work being done. And um, we didn't do that, but I believe uh, Lafayette's uh, guy told Shane that he called the District 8, which is where you call. Yeah. You know, all the guy's name's Ed Pierce. And uh, somebody else said, yeah, that's okay. We, we don't need to have that, uh, that meeting. Just go ahead and do it. Well, who that person is, we well, who's, who's responsible for Vic? I mean, I pres believe me, I presume it's us. But who's responsible for conforming with a permit? Doesn't our contract with Lafayette say install as per permit or something like that? I don't know. Do we have a contract with them? We signed something way back when, I believe. Yeah. No, they get a copy of our permit. They, they got a copy of our permit that we got from the state, I guess. I'd say it's on. I'd say it's on them. I'd say we shouldn't. Uh, well, we I, held the payment. We held the payment. Well, we owe the so, forty-eight hundred. But what about the other two thousand? Uh, that kind of has to be negotiated, I guess. So they're so looking let me get, you right. Let me. So let me um, get this clear. So I, it's in the pay run for the warrant for tonight, but I have not. I was holding off on sending the check. Are you in agreement with that as a board to hold off until this is resolved? I would say, I would say we owe the 4,800, but we should put them on notice that we're not happy with the fact that they installed it contrary to the permit. And I don't, I don't know. What, what do you think we should do? Until they resolve yeah. the problem. So, they'll resolve it. So the consensus from Bill and Steve is we owe them the money, but we shouldn't pay it until there's been some kind of resolution. Yeah, if we pay it, we give up our leverage. They'll tell us to move the damn thing ourselves, or who knows what they'll do. So the Shane is, uh, Shane is on vacation this week, so uh, the, guy could, uh, the guy didn't shut it off uh, until last Wednesday, I believe. And... Uh, they were looking into it, and when Shane comes back Monday, we will do a follow up on it. I mean, I don't, I don't. Uh, we're going to have to get. We've, we, uh, I've called, uh, I've called uh, Kristen Driscoll, which she's in charge of it, as far as uh, uh, you know, issuing the permit uh, via Ed Pierce, the the guy that works for him, and I've talked to Jim Coda, who is in charge of uh, enforcement, and uh, uh, nobody had. Uh, we haven't had a meeting yet. Or, we should have a. We, I think we. I told Shane we should have a meeting with him, kind of figure it out. But uh, Lafayette's uh, man Jamie, who I've never talked to, uh, who told uh, Shane that he had everything in in uh, in uh, order, uh, was uh, trying to find out who he talked to in District Eight. Yeah, well, these guys. Well, Lafayette, kind of loaded, they, but that's what I heard. The time. They should know how to do this. Uh, the lion share their work. It's with the state of Vermont. Oh, well, like I said, after being around the state uh, enforcing contracts for uh, close to 50 years, uh, one thing you never do is trust a contractor. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's that's most of them are pretty good, but hey, there's mistakes can be made anywhere. I mean, everybody makes mistakes. Oh, no, I understand. But why does it always seem to come back on the town's shoulders? If we made the mistake, if we made the mistake and it's our fault, it's our deal. I understand, but if it's somebody else's fault, they should be responsible. That's all I'm that's, saying. That's what we're trying to get to the bottom to. Oh, right now. But if they had, if Lafayette was given a copy of the permit for me, unless I hear differently from somebody, it's their responsibility to follow the terms of the contract. They certainly had a copy of it. They certainly had a copy of it, and it's right in black and white on what we have to do. And we didn't do it, or it wasn't done. Let's put it that way, it wasn't done. So just to be clear, it's not just a matter of putting a speed sign on there, it's in the wrong place, we have to move it. That's correct. Yeah. That's, uh, what, uh, that's what the state of Vermont's asking us to do at this time. Great. So, and then my second half of the question is because this was not part of the original, um, motion or special article or something where does all this extra money get posted to because it's unbudgeted 
but does it affect highways? Does it affect whatever? I mean, I don't quick, know where. A quick answer without, without thinking about it too much and without looking at the numbers. And just the thought is, is split it between the select board contingency fund, which we never seem to spend. And, uh, and I hate to spend it the first, first or second warrant of the year, but, and half of it from highways. But, or should we show that this road sign thing went over budget? I mean, there's going to be another bill coming too. So that's. Well, let's take the other bill one step at a time. I, you know, I don't know. We did, I did, never occurred to me uh, at the time that the cost of installation was going to be almost as much as the cost of the sign. That I understood what a big deal it was. Um, I might have. I might have asked the question. I mean, we should have put. In hindsight, we should have put something in there for installation. Or so you know, I thought it, that we as the town were going to install it. Originally, that was the thought. I mean, can the town the do that yeah. on a state road? Well, yes, with the permits and everything. But the thought process was Lafayette, Sheldon, I mean, they, they work for the state all the time, gave them the permit, and they did the installation. Not in the motion that we're going to do the special at the end of the meeting. The, the, uh, the uh, $1,000 of that, that labor is uh, traffic control, which we couldn't, right. have, I mean, we could have hired control. somebody, but we couldn't, have, we can't really go out and do traffic control because we're not certified traffic control people yeah. on state highways. We can do it on down highways. Well, I, I, unless anybody disagrees, um, I think we should hold out that payment out of the, out of the order for the time being, Dorinda. And uh, they, they kept us waiting long enough. They can wait a little bit longer. And okay, Sarah has a question. That was, question. That was yeah. yeah. No, we got to it. We all agree. Call him or who's gonna, who's gonna be that person? Vic. Vic is in. I'll, I'll talk with Vic, but yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. Okay. You have anything else, Dorinda? Uh, not at this time. Okay. You got the planning commission on for five thirty. Oh no, I know. We're we're running a little late. We don't want to keep Sandy waiting. Hi, Sandy. Wait on the agenda. So I guess I guess uh, I guess we're ready to go with a joint meeting with the planning commission. Uh, with updates on the walkable village scoping study, drafting new zoning regulations and other activities. And we also, as part of this, uh, should should accept to read into the record the uh, the letters that we, or emails we received. I'm not sure whether they were letters or emails, but uh, regarding that scoping study, or regarding the uh, walkable Middlesex. Uh, thank you. I will... Uh... 535 call the planning commission meeting to order because there's a quorum of the planning commission here. Um, myself and Mitch and Elias are here and Phil Coleman is on Zoom. And thank you for the opportunity. I'll be quick because I know you all have a really packed agenda tonight. I did share um, in advance of this a, a spreadsheet of just projects that the planning commission is working on um, that has you know, some, inf some information about where we are and what we've been doing and um, happy to answer any, any questions about that. Um, I'll just go through them quickly. The first is the energy plan and Theo's been taking the lead on that. And the current schedule for that um, would be to have a vote at town meeting in 2022 um, on the enhanced energy plan that would be combined with the town plan. Um, and there's still some edits and some input to get from the energy committee before that's finalized at the planning commission level. It will then be forwarded to the select board. The next is the zoning update. And I know there were some questions about this last time. I'd say we're about halfway through and we, I, I believe we'll be on track to finish our work in December. I shared with um, the select board sort of two possible timelines for adoption. Um, 
while it would be possible, physically possible to get this onto the ballot for town meeting, I think that would be really tough. It would mean the select board doesn't really get a chance to review it or make any edits. And I expect you're gonna to want to be able to do that. You, you, you'd have time for all the process in place, but you wouldn't really have time to, re, to review that. And honestly, some of this has been held up by the pandemic. It's been difficult to do outreach. And I really wanna make sure that folks in town know what's happening with zoning changes and be able to do more outreach before it's put before voters on a vote. So realistically, I think it will be um, sometime after June, either by special election, or it could be put off until November when there will be a regular election anyway. If something else comes up that really needs attention and really needs to be changed sooner than that, there, there is a process to have interim zoning and that the select board would have to approve that. And those changes can be made within, I think, a couple of months. So uh, I'm sort of disappointed that we're not able to do this faster. I think it's also important to make sure it gets done and we do the outreach and folks know what they'll be voting on when the vote comes. Um, next is uh, the planning grant. And I, I know you, um, oh, there was talk when, when the budget for consultant work with the regional planning commission was added to the budget for this current fiscal year, um, there was a conversation about could we apply for a for grant funds to pay for that. There is a, a municipal planning grant um, that could be available for that. Unfortunately, you apply for that in August or September, you get notified about the award in December, which is about the time that we would have completed our work on this. So I'm not sure that the timing for that works. Um, I, you know, I keep my ears out for other grant opportunities, but they, the one that would normally be available to pay for um, planning commissions to do zoning work would be that municipal planning grant. That's the one that's doing the, um, uh, the, uh, the town, the budget work. Capital. Yeah, capital budget work. They got a grant for that for last year. Um, and next is the uh, the scoping study. And I know the, the select board has received some correspondence on this, as has the planning commission. Um, and it's it's good to, it, I'm glad that we've re received correspondence on this. Um, the scoping study is moving forward to just identify what's possible, what would the cost be, what are the right of ways, what are the studies that would need to happen um, for both sidewalks and, you know, pr a very preliminary evaluation of the possibility of a, of a river trail. Um, the first order of business really that we're doing is having landowner meetings and we've scheduled two landowner, you know, two broader landowner meetings, one for the landowners where, where a river trail might go, um, and that one is tomorrow. And the second group of landowner meetings is next week for where the sidewalk would go. And we wanted to, to do that just to make sure we get, um, we talk to those folks first and you know hear what concerns they have, because we have heard some concerns from folks um, about that. And we'll you know take, take input and see what's, what's feasible and what's not. Um, so we're looking forward to having those conversations with, with landowners. And from there, we'll move forward with, with the scoping study. And the, the grant um, the town received to uh, build some overlooks and perhaps a, and a path um, on Camp Mead property. Um, that's moving forward perhaps a little slower than, than we had hoped. We have to work out the language for an easement, which is difficult when we don't know exactly where the path is going to go. But I've been working with the Camp Mead folks as well as with um, the town attorney um, on that. And part of the grant was for a, the town attorney's time to work on that. And then once that gets... Um, you know, more solidified, we can, um, or the, it would be the camp meet folks would need to file an application with the town because I think it's within um, 
a right of way or a setback and to make sure that whatever they would build would, would be all right. Um, and they would also need permission from um, Velco, which has the power line that runs across there. So there's some, you know, hurdles that would be maybe too strong, but you know, you need to make sure that, that all of those things are in place before you start any building. Um, and then finally, um, we did put out a notice for an assistant zoning administrator. I know we've received interest from one person and uh, perhaps for a second person as well. Um, so we should be able to fill, um, fill that. Um, we can take it up at the next planning commission meeting and pass along a nomination to the select board after that. That's, I don't know if Elias or Mitch have other things to add or Phil. No. Andy, it's, it's Peter. I would just uh, say I, I really appreciate that spreadsheet that's summarized everything and that having that kind of information is very helpful to us. So um, I encourage you to keep that up and share it with us. That's great. Um, my other comment is the same comment I made before, which is I just think we need to think very carefully if it makes sense to have a special meeting to approve the zoning or if we should should defer it uh, or if we should defer it until election day in November uh, to get more participation. Uh, that's nothing we have to decide anytime soon, right? Sarah has some comments. Hey, Peter. Yes. Sandy, you know, we do have, we will have an August primary, statewide primary, so that might work. Well, that might work. Yes, I agree. I agree. I just, I just do not want to, uh, I think it's a bad idea to short circuit the process. I want the select board to have time to make changes if there are any and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm uh, trying to do it for town meeting looks like it's impossible. So let's see what, let's see what happens, but we've got, we've got time, but we need to keep it on our radar screen. Well, thank you, Sandy. Anything else uh, for the Planning Commission or from the Planning Commission? I don't hear any. Um, I have a motion to adjourn the Planning Commission portion of this meeting. Motion, motion, motion from Mitch and a second from Elias. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Bill raised his hand as well. Unanimous. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Thank okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Keep up the good work. Um, back on schedule, Sandy, you put us back on schedule. Good job. Uh, setting the town tax rate, Madam Treasurer. Mm, fun stuff. <laughs> okay. I sent you three proposals. Yep. Um, so as we know, the school came in less than a penny below what it is. Um, so proposal number one was no, it just exactly as what we anticipate um, funds to come in at and what our approved budget is. So um, can, you, can you just just so I can line these line these things up because my printer spewed them out all over the floor and I'm not sure I have them in the right it order. It should say at the bottom what each one is. Number one, number two, and number three. I don't have any. Oh. It, did not, it did not print that. My printer did not print that. No. Okay. No, so this if you one could just give, me, give me the tax rate on each one of them, that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. So the first one, like I said, it would... Um, it just covers exactly as the budget was passed and all with our grand list. The good news is the grand list increased. So that makes the tax rate go down. Um, so I'm, with, trying to, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm, I'm trying to line these things up. So, so the first look at the non-residential rate and tell me which is which. Non-residential rate is 2.1821. Okay, I got that one. That's number one. That's number one. Okay. And number two is 2.2080. Got it. And number three is 2.1973. Yep. 
You had different things? What was in the first little spreadsheet that you sent? No, that, no these that were, she sent these out before. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Same page. Can you make a copy? Sure, make lots of copies if you want. Mm -hmm. And I went to make copies. And, and it, it, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was out of town. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys see my card? Yeah. 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 So, Dorinda, can you, can you explain to us the differences between the three? Yeah. I'm trying to. I'm waiting. Okay. Sarah's making copies. Okay. All right. Thank you. But then I'm like, could we get down three pages? And then it was like, oh, it is nice down to the third. Yeah, but who knows what the two copies are? Okay, I'm waiting to know if the car can be uh, Oh, yeah, I heard about that. I don't think I can use it if I get the car. Yeah, none that I know of. Okay, it's almost there. there. She's making yeah. copies for people. Another Randy's and Randy's online. Yeah. Randy comes to just about every select board meeting. Did you screw up something? I don't have copies either, but <laughs> I'm sitting in my car. I, I have a hard time getting it to you, Mary. I know. Well, I mean, my I lost power at my house, and I had a doctor's appointment, and, and I didn't quite get back. And I'm saying, maybe I should just drive to Middlesex. I'm not that far away, but <laughs> I didn't want to hold things up. Anybody here what caused the power outage? It was quite a big power outage. Yeah, you know, I haven't. Peter, I haven't heard the word. I mean, I, I had to call because I was down in uh, Dart at Dartmouth for a doctor's appointment. And I had to call because it went out around 11 and it didn't come back until about 3. Yeah, but it was 1,500 1, 1, users were out. Yeah. And Peter. It was, yes. it was the more town Red substation. squirrel. A red, a red squirrel, squirrel caused it? Red squirrel caused it. <laughs> Well, he knows more than I have because I haven't been able to be in so touch with him. So here's my comment on that while we're getting our things lined up. Power companies always say it's a red squirrel, just like fire departments always say it's electrical. <laughs> when in doubt, blame the poor red squirrel who gave up his life. Okay, so everybody's got everything. To, in quick summary, the difference in these three proposals is a penny in each one, roughly. So we're on budget number one, which ends, okay, budget as passed. That's taking all of our expected revenues and all of our budgeted um, expenditures, but we do know that we run over budget. But anyways, that is just what it would be for the municipal rate would be 0 0.4993. And then your local agreement rate, it's we've got one less this year, so that comes down to uh, less than a penny. If you go to the number two, that is level funding, the muni same municipal rate and the same local agreement rate that we currently have in place for this year. This covers the 4.45% budget increase that we had. So this is no additional, even though the budget went up 4.45, it's no additional monies being asked of the townspeople um, for the municipal portion. And it actually goes down a fraction um, from last year on the residential rate because the um, education rate dropped that fraction. Maybe doesn't it go down a penny too on that? Well, or not quite a penny. Okay. Yeah. Um, on the, because that one should be the same. So then on number three, that one was the happy medium in between, um, which 
is, you know, it's like, okay, do you want to come somewhere between what we really need and what we were last year? My recommendation is to stay at what we were last year. Um, I think it more than, you know, with the budget, we even ended up taking things out of the budget. We're five days into the new budget year and we're already dipping into the well. And I do know there's some other unexpected costs that are gonna be coming through. Um, so, so that is that is proposal number two, right? That is proposal number two, staying at what we were um, last year. And Sarah suggested we take it one step further and possibly use the exact same numbers that we used last year, which would affect. Um, we would have to raise the municipal rate by just a little bit, but make it come into balance. So the rates become the same as last year uh, for 2020 as they are for 2021. I don't know. I'm having a hard time hearing you, Dorinda. We've got some kind of interference going on. Um, so I don't know as it makes much of a big, big difference between any of them. But um, there's a little difference. The fraction of the difference. And the only thing, the reason on that number two would be just the adjustment that the, um, the school tax, the education tax. Are you, are you speaking into the laptop or the microphone or what are you speaking I'm into? Speaking into the laptop. Oh boy, it's, you're really Which jumping. Is the microphone? Does that matter? Hearing you as well. Huh? Well, right. I, is it the other laptop? Okay, well, we can... I can hear Sarah. I can I'm hear having you. trouble hearing you too. Yeah, me too. Come over there. No, I'll just bring it over here. It's a laptop. I can just move it. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Oops. All right. Is, is that me? Yes. All right. So that's going to do. Okay. okay. Ah, you, you're clear. Wait a minute. Still. Wait a minute. <laughs> that is still. Here, you know, it's your computer. I know how to do it. <laughs> now you're getting feedback between the two computers, I think. Close it. <laughs> oh, we did away with it. <laughs> okay. When in doubt, close Does that it. Work? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So. Other than, I'm sorry, everybody. We're gonna we got some work to do on our technology. So, <laughs> other than other than just setting the tax rate at a slightly different amount, um, we usually talk about the anticipated receipts and why we estimate them to be what they we estimate them to be. Um, and you haven't, those are the same across all three proposals. Yes, because that's not going to change from what I anticipate. Okay. But do you have any, are, th are those substantially the same as what they were last year? Well, your bank interest isn't, I mean, they're basically, I'd have to go back and look, but we went by what our last budget thing was, and we increased the licenses and clerk fees. Um, I think we increased zoning from last year. Railroad tax, we kept the same. The pilot, two pilots we got are confirmed numbers that we received. Yep. Um, delinquent tax and interest and penalty, that's always a shot in the dark. Yeah, I know. And all of these show a zero fund balance contribution. Well, we, that's it's just another line if you're going to contribute out of the fund balance. No, I understand. I understand. So could you, and I, I meant to do this before the meeting, but I didn't do it. Can you tell me what our current total residential rate and non-residential rates are? Right on that piece of paper. Yeah. Oh, it's over to the right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the total residential rate is going to go down a penny. 
And the non-residential, yeah, I got it, okay. Not quite a penny. Yeah, right. Well, at least it's headed in the right direction. Well, any is comments, it? Any I mean, comments or, go ahead, Dorinda, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. I mean, the other thing you could do is <laughs> if you wanted to bump up your municipal rate to equal, so your bottom line comes out the same as last year, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's a small difference. What do you mean by that? You wouldn't it keep, if we would keep the same rates as last year. So your residential rate would be 2.3220 and your non-residential would be 2.1725. So it, and it, the only difference in these numbers is because of what the state education rate came through at. So we can leave them as the actual state education rates and call it a day and leave our okay. municipal and local agreement rates the same as last year. I like the idea that the bottom line comes out that the uh, that the non-residential people get a get a three cent hit. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> so, I noticed I, that I right on. That's, that's been a bee in my bonnet for a long time. Yeah, I agree. So I guess I guess I'm saying with all of that, I'm I am in favor, I agree with Dorinda, I'm in favor of uh, Option number two, but I don't know how others feel or if anybody else has any comments or questions. No, that, that sounds good to me too, Peter. You probably closed it up in my computer, Sarah. <laughs> she wasted no, no time shutting me off. No. Well, the good news is we've got you loud and clear now, Dorinda. <laughs> okay. Well, I will hand this back to Sarah so she can take notes when the note. Well, but okay, you well, wait a minute. Just, just, just before you, you hand it back to Sarah, um, is somebody prepared to make a motion? Right. Well, or do we have more discussion, questions, concerns? Well, shouldn't we ask the budget committee then? Yeah. I make the motion, but I don't have the words because I don't have the I don't have the paper in front of me. So I don't even know what the tax rate is in the second option. Hey, I don't think you guys heard this, but uh, Phil wondered to know if the what the since the budget committee is here, if they would like to chime in. Yes. There you go. Good idea. Makes sense. I, for the same reason, I like giving the non-residential rate a little higher. <laughs> yeah, so. I agree. <laughs> If we could shift a little bit, yeah, right. <laughs> if you need a little more, that'd be nice. But I'm sorry, I, I don't see in either one of these options the difference between the non residential tax rates. It's at the bottom two, right. the last two lines. Bottom two lines. Oh. There's 21 in here. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But they're still paying less. less. In all of this, they're still paying the same. Right. Non-residential tax can't rate. We can't take that. It's, yeah. the, it's the state education yeah. rate that's making yeah, it yeah, go yeah. that direction. But this just makes them, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Dorinda, do we still have a number of people in town using the non-residential rate? Um, I believe there is some. It's about the same as it's been? I wouldn't have that answer yet. The, the new state payments are just beginning to come in. So until we start receiving those um, and we get them every Monday, we don't know who's filed with residential and who hasn't. Gotcha. I guess the other thing that I would say about this, just to get back to the issue of fund balance is considering we're actually having a small decrease on the residential rate and a small increase on the non-residential rate, I would recommend we not use our fund balance at this time, would be my thought. Will the actual tax bill be virtually the same as last year? If we have the same rate? No, it's gonna be a little less. It's gonna be, right, last year was, 2.3220 this year is going to be 2.3159 for residential non-residential last year was 2.1725 and it's going to be 2.2080 so 
Well, what I mean is we have, don't, the grand list has changed, correct? So if we have a lower rate, people would get a tax bill that is substantially similar, but slightly less than last year's tax bill. Is that correct? No, the non-residential people will have a three cent increase. The residential people will have a little less than a penny decrease. Okay. Got it. I'm, I'm just saying to me, the, the time to use our fund balance is when we have a, a startling increase for some reason and we're trying to, we're trying to no, we don't want out to the tax rate and this is not one of those years. Right. Thankfully. I agree with that. The grand list. Because the grand list would be go up. It wasn't from the reappraisal though, it was from individual properties, but that did go up, which is what made us be able to keep a level from the treasury. I think the reappraisal. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. They they're talking about reappraisal. And also uh, you know, the way it works is like the education rate it does last year's. Is that last year's yeah, grand list? Yeah, right. I think yeah. it does go up. And because they can't possibly mm -hmm. compute it. Whereas the town tax rate is this year. Right. Yeah. But then next year we might have some wonky stuff because of the common level of appraisal might be all over the book. So save your money. Why, okay. why is the CLA gonna be weird? Oh, they changed something in the. <laughs> because this is the worst. The question well, I get the too, most. Yeah, yeah. The houses have been selling like mm -hmm. far okay. over. Yeah. So they're right. gonna, so the state's going to say you're really under appraised, which means that we're going to jack up your rate to yeah. get, and also you need to go through a townwide reappraisal. Mm -hmm. Well, well won't they go through a reappraisal when right. the house sells? Okay, one at a time, please. Happen. Uh, the town go in and reappraise it. Not always. No. Oh, I thought it did when it the, sold. The state, it the state gets the property transfer tax yeah. return, so the state sees what that sold for. So, the, so a town has a pre property appraised at two hundred eighty thousand dollars. When the state gets the property transfer tax return that shows that it was sold at four hundred twenty thousand dollars, yeah, that screws up all of us. Right. I know, but then I thought our people went in and did a reappraisal when a house sold, so that we could get it up to the price of you know to a more realistic assessment. Yeah, but it's not realistic. That's the problem. <laughs> right. right, but it might be more realistic than yeah. what it was if it was at the no. last. No, because no, you no, just no, had no. a reappraisal. Hey guys, please, what is, when you all talk at the same time, it makes it very difficult to understand what people are saying. I'm not asking you to all shut up. I'm just asking you. <laughs> 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 to the yeah, it's, it's yeah. fine. Maybe, we were just... maybe this should be like second grade. You raise your hands. We can have Dorinda be the cop. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are we are we good on this? Do we need do we have anything more we need to talk about? No, we have to set have the to, rate. Have right? to set yeah, the rate. The rate. I'll so. make a motion that we we do option number two. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, which would make Aye. the whoa, 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 wait a minute. Would make the municipal tax rate. 52.45 local agreement 0 0.0024 and town tax rate, total town tax rate uh, 0.5269. And the bottom line would be the total residential rate would be 2.3159 and the non-residential rate would be 2.2080. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you one and all. We've done it to ourselves again. Yay. Well, it's a good year, thanks to our increase in our uh, grand list. Thank you for your work on this, Dorinda. You're welcome. I know, Dorinda, I just want to add my voice to this. You make it so much easier for us to set the tax rate with work you do in advance. It used to take us forever and we were doing calculations uh, for 15, 20 minutes just to come up with the figures you had available right away. So thank you. I'll go check out your pergola. Big night for the big night for the treasurer. Thank you. <laughs> 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 he needs to have a 
TNT. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Highway <laughs> Department update. Hey, Victor. Yes. Um, before the grader is in, it was supposed to come in, I think, uh, the uh, from the last meeting we had before uh, the last select board meeting, it's going to come in that week. And uh, it did. And uh, I think they did a little grading down uh, center center road from like Notch or from Zidon Road down to uh, like Steve's. And uh, they did a little bit over on Baldock Hill Road and they haven't done. They they're getting used to it. It's a it is a different machine. It's a run a different way with joysticks instead of handles, and uh, so they're getting used to it. Yep. Um, Hopefully they like it. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, showing it off, uh, I have no problem with that. Just have. Uh, I guess Liz can have. Uh, Susan Clark, get a hold of me, and uh, whatever they want, we'll do. Uh, whatever it takes. Uh, Thank you, Vic. I, I'm <laughs> glad to do it. Um, quite a lot of our stuff is broke, as you know. We're uh, we're running. Uh, we rented that uh, mowing machine. You've probably seen it run around uh, town a little bit. Uh, it was broke down today. It had uh, some issues. Um, I'm not quite sure they're asking uh, for another day because it's been broke down. Um, I don't know what uh, the select board, they must have seen it around town. Um, yep. There are some, some concerns about it not mowing clean. Uh, part of it is uh, maybe, because, maybe because the grass is wet and it's very wet out. And the other thing is it's very hard to control. It is not rotary cutter it is more of a uh, uh, chain cutter and so it's harder to control according to the people controlling it but uh, hopefully uh, oh, they, hopefully it gets up running and uh, we can do that uh, some more tomorrow uh, I, have it for I was winter. twice today and I couldn't get a good good uh, idea of how much more they had to do but well, hopefully they'll get it done they have it for a week yeah they have it they have it uh un until thursday and they come and get it friday at noon so that's it well if anybody's got any questions I, I don't know what to say other than that it's well my only my only question is if we need to put in a little overtime to get the mowing done, let's make sure we get it done. That's all. I don't know if that's possible. I think they come and get it no matter what. No, but I'm just saying if somebody has to work three hours later. At oh, 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 they, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we were talking about Peter. Peter Hood said uh, overtime is unlimited and they can go as many times. As <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, no, they've been going, Peter. They've been going. Okay, good. I just, I just and they will. Sure we finish the job, Victor. That's all I'm saying. But no, no, I don't. I don't mean any disrespect, but they have, and uh, and uh, that's exactly what they're trying to do. I mean, good. Hey, Vic, yep. is it the town responsibility or the state? Because um, at the bottom of Culver Hill Road, again, with that blind corner, the chicory is um, up really high, and you can't see the cars. Is that us cutting it, or the state has to cut that? The state. Whoever gets there first, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I'm ready to go down there with my weed whacker. Yeah, yeah I think over on Baldock, where Baldock Road comes on Elm Street, it's the same deal. Okay. Well, I would say when we're right there with our rented machine, we should just do it and let the state complain if they want to. Exactly. You, know, you notice the state filled the potholes down by the interstate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing is uh, the... Uh, the excavator broke last week, and it's uh, it won't turn. Uh oh, and we've been checking into that, and uh, uh, I guess the question is, how much money do you want to put in a forty thousand, thirty-five, forty thousand dollar excavator? <laughs> well, they the fun you... just keeps coming, doesn't it? What's that? They have no idea what the problem is. Is it the pump? Well, they had they had Paul Lackey come over from. Uh, 
from uh, Anderson. Uh, I used to work for Anderson or does or whatever uh, yeah. it recommended. And um, they crawl, he crawled under it and he said it's, uh, it's in the gear, uh, in the gearbox that uh, goes to the uh, turntable. Oh, okay. He's got. He's going to get some estimate. He's got. He's going to get some uh, idea of what it would take to fix that. Um, uh, Jay and uh, uh, Hang on. I think Charles cleaned it all up today. They uh, degreased it and got all the stuff out, and they took the panels off so that he can get easy access to it. How old is the excavator, Vic? Um, I'm not quite sure, but I would say that that machine has got to be about at least 11 or 12 years old. Oh, sure. Let me go look. Is there, a, is there a replacement schedule for that kind of thing? Yes, there is a replacement. It's on our, I don't have that in front of me, but it's on our replacement, on our schedule for all of our equipment replacement for that. And it tells what year it is. But it's longer than a truck. I mean, it's like 15 to 20 years, right? Yeah. Say? But it's an well, older. Anyway. The bottom line is subject to subject to whatever they figure out is the thing is virtually worthless the way it is. So we kind of have to fix it, unfortunately. Right. Um, we we did, you know, put your mind at ease uh, before Shane left on vacation. <laughs> talked about it and he instructed nobody to give anybody uh, give uh uh paul the uh, the mechanic any authorization until we had talked it over and uh, probably talked it over with you people i have to get this done uh, this uh this uh approved see, grant. The, uh, the bill for the repair on the loader i'm still not happy about how that went down but yeah it wasn't just eleven hundred dollars it's kind of like the signs it's the installation too Oh no, I know, but I'm, but I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm. Yeah, I money. Wish somebody could tell me why it was necessary to replace that. So far, nobody has done that. Everybody's avoiding me. <laughs> Replacing what, Peter? I would have, I would have cleaned it up and greased it and put it back in there if it were me. The, the, the brake pedal assembly for the loader. I specifically went down there and told them not to replace it unless they spoke to me and they went ahead and replaced it. And nobody ever spoke to me. So well, who was they? Was it just, the mechanic, just the mechanic went ahead and did it? No, no, no. I think our, uh, our, uh, representative from the road crew must have, I mean, I don't know. No, I don't know either. Literally, I, I, I sent Shane an email and I said, who authorized this? No response. Okay. I, I'm just upset about the way the whole thing went down because I think I know. It's ridiculous. I know. Honestly, we spent money we didn't need to spend. No, 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 I could no, be no. wrong. I mean, if they if they truly took it apart and saw that it was damaged and really needed to be replaced, you guys can talk. It's all fine. I just wish they told me that. But what? they just went ahead and did it because they thought that's what they should do. We, we went over that, that, that whole thing last meeting. But anyway, anyway, it's done, and hopefully it's working. Looks like we paid 118 <laughs> demise. Demise. How much was that? Um, I heard Dorinda. I mean, I kind of heard what you said, but not exactly. We paid 118,000 for the loader. Oh, we didn't. That wasn't the cost of the repairs that we're talking about, is it? The oh. excavator. Wait a minute. So, what's this one? Uh, wrong, so I gave you the wrong one. So maybe yeah, this well, no, tech needs to load it. They've got more than one thing in this file. So I guess I believe, and I don't have the warrants up in front of me, but I leave, believe it was $4,800. 2014, and it was 94000 no, 118000 hmm, Wait, that's still the loader, right? Is that what we're talking about? Or? Excavator no, so the repairs. We're talking about the, the repair invoice yeah. for the, the loader. I was going to say, because that thing, that's, that's a lot older problem. than that. It's a lot older than that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're, do you have our schedule? I don't. It's probably in the town book. Steve. Yes. Steve? Wasn't, are we talking about the loader or the excavator? The oh, excavator. The excavator. Wasn't that bought right about the time Paul was made foreman? Yeah, I think it was right about that time, but it's right on our equipment replacement schedule, and I don't no, have okay. that in front of me. 
Yeah, and I think that I think that was like uh, 97, uh, 98, somewhere in there. But I could be wrong. Well, we've just got to. I guess it wasn't. It was two thousand eight. It's a two thousand and eight excavator, and it uh, we've got replacement year of of twenty four twenty five. <laughs> Oh, so you have a long way to go. So we have another we have another two and a half years. Does anybody have any idea how many hours are on that machine? Do you know, Vic? I don't. I don't. Does it say? Yeah, it'll tell you. It's got an hour meter, but I no, I didn't I didn't look at that today. Uh, I just I didn't. Well, we need to take you know we need to take this one step at one step at a time, but uh, absolutely. I, 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 I fear that we are in for, uh, in for a significant repair, and I don't think we'll probably have any choice. I mean, if it turns out that for some reason they think the thing is done, then that's, that's a whole different uh, animal. But I have, to believe, I have to believe that the hours on it are not that many. Right. I, I agree with that. Well, you know, I'm wondering, too, has our um, replacement schedule sort of always been the same for years and years and years when we all know that equipment is not made the way it used to be. And so this is our first excavator. So this is our first. Uh, okay. Experience. I didn't know if like, oh, we really should have, you know, considered replacing it well, in 10 years versus it isn't 15 like, years. Well, it isn't like an excavator in, in a excavating company that, that puts on, you know, 1,500 right. hours a year. You know, we're, right. we'd probably be lucky if we use it three, four hundred hours a year. So our lifespan for ours is, is much longer. Lot. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Paul Askey, the guy that's looking at that, is very reputable, and he'll let us know. But I, I, I have a feeling that that it's not going to be an insurmountable figure for that. I might be wrong, but. Well, I also think that when we're doing our budget, we might want to think about budgeting more for repairs because this is a this is just a common theme that things are breaking down and costing more money. Yep. And we want to be honest about it. And not, you know, be and even if it means our budget goes up, at least we can explain to the people things are not that does uh, that does remind me to bring the issue up. Did we buy the warranty on the grader? We bought the seven year, the seven year grader, the only one that, that came with it. So there's no extended warranty beyond that. Not beyond seven years, as I understood it from the from Shane uh, via the uh, salesman. We asked two or three times. I'm pretty sure it's correct. Okay. Just check on that, Vic, to make sure. What's that? Just to make sure that that's what that warranty is, just seven years. That's what he said. Well, we should have we should have documentation, right? The other the other. I think it's right on the 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 uh, bill of sale that we gave uh, Dorinda. I think has it on it. Yes, it is on the bill of sale. Eighty four months, I believe it said. Well, that's probably the that's probably the manufacturer's warranty. I wonder if there are other extended warrant warranties available. I just you know it's it's the last. It's the last three or four years where we're gonna where we're gonna take it in the shorts, literally or figuratively. <laughs> I just uh, if there's an option to do it, I would like to do it. But if there's no option, there's no option. But there are all kinds of aftermarket warranties on all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I I uh, don't know about aftermarket, but the salesman at. Uh... John Deere, and he said no, there wasn't anything there. Well, maybe through the manufacturer, there's nothing else. I don't know. It's worth it, it's worth another another run at those guys, and maybe the salesman isn't the right guy to guy to talk to. I just if it's outrageously expensive or it's totally unavailable, then we shouldn't do it. But if it's available, I'd like to think about it. Yeah. And now's the time to do it when the thing is brand all the way down to. Uh, no, uh, Tim Lawson's house. Do we know how much? Have we seen the bill yet? Do we know how much of our money? I have not seen it. Um, 
No, Bill. I don't know. Steve may be able to tell you because he has a little better uh, eye for that. But uh, when when we got that quote from uh, uh, from Dubois, Jeff Newton, uh, we had to hit, we had to hit twenty five thousand dollars. We would have to pay for the moving, and I don't know. I don't know if we had it or if, if they're still going to charge us for that. Uh, are you familiar with that at all, Steve? Yes, I am, and I'll talk with Jeff about that. Because yeah. we used it right up to you know the last day of the year. Yeah, that would be good if you could do that. Get that cleared up for uh, so we know. I will. Well, Dorinda needs, Dorinda needs to know because uh, let's not pay for the moving if the deal was we weren't going to pay for it. Uh, the, other, the other question I have, which is just a little bit of a concern, and uh, as a re resident of East Hill, I was driving multiple times a day through their, through their work zone there, yeah. and they did have signs up, but boy, other than that, you pull right up to that excavator and you had to wait for the guy to turn around to see you. And sometimes he'd give you a hand signal and sometimes he wouldn't. I mean, they didn't have anybody really doing traffic control. And I don't know if that is the way it should be or not. But, you know, they would have two of those big dump trucks parked in the road and then the excavator working away in the road. And uh, I saw a lot of people driving in the ditch to try and get around the excavator. Uh right. If you, uh, yeah, it, it was decided, uh, we decided that, you know, on the on the town road, uh, it's about $1,000 a day for flaggers if you want to use them. I guess we could get one of those things they used on Center Road last, no, not last year, but the year before, with a sign, a stop and go sign. Would you go through that? Well, what, I don't know how much that rents for. I have no idea. I've got rates, but I know, I'm pretty sure it was like, I want to say it was somewhere around 900 but I don't know if that was one day or if it was several days or something. Yeah, I that was for that look. sign. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I could go back and look, but I know the bill was significant. Yeah. One, told, one I issue. It was really unsafe, but one time I waited for about 10 minutes because there was a woman ahead of me and she wasn't going to move an inch. So finally the, the excavator operator got out of the excavator and stood there and gave her the come ahead signal. It was just, I don't know. I wouldn't say it was awful, but I wouldn't say it was perfect either, as they say. Right. Yeah. Well, but they did a nice uh, job. I, th I think they did a great job. We've got what? Some more hydro seating to do up there? Looks like that. We do, safe. but we have our we have our whole crew uh, swapping off and on on the uh, the mowing the roadsides for the yeah. rest of the shoot. Yeah. But the other thing is, uh, it was felt by all. It's not my opinion, especially, but. Uh, maybe next time we do something like that and is uh, maybe a little bit smaller excavator so it doesn't have to set out in the road quite as far was a thought by uh, by the road crew and uh, you know who am I to say uh, I, I I tend to agree with them but. well they did it they did a nice job and as far as I know I haven't heard any reports of any accidents but it's I, I have to imagine it's pretty hard when you're sitting in that cab of the excavator, especially when you're facing away from the traffic. I mean, they had, they had mirrors and they had flashing lights and everything else, but it was pretty hard to tell when you were supposed to move and not move. I don't. I went through every time I went through. Uh, one of the truck drivers were guiding us through, but other than that, yep. Yep. Peter. Yes, Sarah. We have, I just don't want you to forget the approving the uh, $175,000 paving grant from the state of Vermont. So that needs oh, to be we're done. Not that. Okay. 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 Victor, do you, yes, Randy. Sorry, I've been trying to use the, the raise the hand here thing here. I don't know if you don't see that or not, but. Uh, well, I apologize. I'm, I'm this. We, we got something that we took us a while to get used to Zoom meetings. Now we're getting used to hybrid meetings. So I apologize, Randy. No problem. So I, uh, I just I just want to drag it back to the conversation that you had about the loader and the repair bills there. It sounds like that was a pretty significant bill. And I'm hearing that there's talk about a possibly a fairly significant bill for this excavator. And I'm wondering if it warrants you know, uh, discussion about the purchasing policy and how 
approvals for monies are given out because if you've asked for it not to happen and somebody else, my understanding is that it's $15,000. It's a lot of money. Um, and one person, anybody within the town as a staff member can just say, yep, go ahead. Is that a concern for you guys? Yes. Yes, there is. The answer is yes, yes and no. In the, in the past, our practice has always been that the road commissioner and the road foreman made those decisions. This was an unusual situation because it happened on a Friday when the road crew wasn't working, it was the only time the guy could show up. I called Shane, Shane had been there early to meet him and then he had to leave, the guy showed up later and I talked to I talked to Shane. I said, "Well, I'll buzz over the hill and talk to him and see what's going on." They couldn't, of course. There's no cell service there, so you can't. Communication was a challenge. So anyway, I went over there, and so it was kind of a screwed up deal from the start. And you know, I don't consider myself an expert heavy equipment repair man, and I'm there talking to these guys and trying to figure out what's going on. And all I'm saying is the way I left it with them is. See if there's a way to clean it up and green. It's it's because dirt and sand on the floor of the of the loader get in where this rod stand slides in and out of the hydraulic controller that controls the brake, and it binds up. It isn't that the brakes don't work; it just binds up. So you have to pull the pedal back with your foot. Well, I understand that isn't a great situation, but maybe just cleaning that thing every once in a while would make sure that that wouldn't happen. And Charles was there and he said, oh, no, 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 no. I think we should replace it. So I was very clear to Charles and very clear to the repair guy. I said, well, pull it apart and see what you can do. If you can clean it and make it work, fine. If you find that there's damage and it needs to be replaced, go ahead and replace it, but call me first. So next thing I know, the thing's been replaced. Charles never called me, the repair guy never called me. Um, it's just, it's just frustrating because I spent the time and effort to go over there and, uh, they didn't communicate with me. And it may well be, as I said, that they took the thing apart and it was damaged and it had to be replaced. And if that's the case, it's fine. But I don't know that. No, I get it. I, I get it. It's just, you know, it seems. But all I'm saying, all I'm saying, Randy, is that was a very unusual circumstance. And. The guy was there with the part and we needed the greater fix. I mean, the loader fixed. So, yes. I get it. I $15,000 is just a lot of money. And to have anybody on town staff to be able to say, yeah, go ahead without any consultation seems like a very high number to me. So I just, I was just hearing the, the, the excavator conversation and, and uh, yeah. I just want to make it. Make it known that it's kind of concerning. That's, that's purchasing bidding something. So, that's uh, Randy, totally different. There's so, just a purchasing policy that relates to purchases like a bid process, not it doesn't say anything in that no related repairs. to repairs. So, so do we have a policy for repairs like that? Evidently not. No. That's the only thing I can find in the binder. We never we never have had Randy because Usually, as I said, it's been it's been up to the uh, up to the road foreman and the road commissioner to make those decisions. Now, in the past, the practice has been when there's a major problem, like is it worth fixing or not worth fixing? Like when we had to put the engine in that truck a year ago, um, Steve and I were very involved in that, and that was a lot more a lot more money. But again, you know, not a lot of uh, and they're, not a lot of options. they're bringing it to the meeting now too. So I mean, it's that's great that they're bringing it up ahead of time. I just, I just wanted to voice it. That's all. Okay, no problem. Thank you, Peter. Yes. Was that, was that bill for that fifteen thousand? No. no. I don't I think, think it was fifteen thousand. I don't have the orders in front of me, but I think it was forty-eight hundred. Yeah. I mean, that's that's re that's more realistic than fifteen thousand. No, no, no. Randy, I think, was just saying that the that the purchasing policy said fifteen thousand. Yeah, right. it's actually the I just looked at the version here, it's ten, so okay. okay. That's purchasing. Okay. Are we gonna talk about the hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar grant from the state of Vermont to repaving center road? 
Yay, Victor, yes. Tell us about the grant. Oh, don't tell us, just sign it. It's $175,000 grant to, uh, to do the road uh, or as part of the road. Um, I believe the one, the uh, today I got an estimate from Pike Industries, it was $337,000 to do that paving and to do the, the, uh, the, uh, the section of center road. The uh, work on the road, on the base of the road um, prior to paving. It was, uh, uh, three, I got it. Yeah. Reclaim and fine grade is, uh, that was, uh, $34,000 and it's $300,000 worth of pavement. And I believe, I believe, which I've never seen the other estimate from, uh, uh, Jay Hudson. Jay Hudson's. I think that isn't that one like three hundred and three thousand, but does not include uh, the little section on Brook Road or McCullough Hill Road, and so they were going to give us another price for that. Well, so, so the expectation here is that is that we are going to use uh, money from our from our uh, paving hey. account to make up that difference, right? And also, and also, we have the chance to uh, do some of the preparation work. Yeah, we can take we can take the berms and stuff off and like that. But uh, my question is uh, to the select board: Is uh, you know, do you want us to replace those culverts? Shane and I went down and examined all the culverts and. Uh, most of them are pretty bad shape, but they're also pretty deep. So there's probably yeah. another fifty thousand dollars in culvert. Yeah. Yeah. That, that deep culvert that you're talking about, the way that culvert was put in, it looks it was to a me slope like pipe. Reason for that thing to be that deep on the on the other side of the road. It was slow. Isn't that a slope pipe? Doesn't that have an elbow in it? Well, yes, but that's what I'm saying. There's no reason for that. That culvert can be put in at a depth that we can do, and it can have it can have a stone uh, on the on the outfall. It doesn't right. need to go down like that. Yeah, but it's still going to cost us some money because when we get out there, we got to start having traffic. A lot more money to hire somebody. Oh, I'm not saying it wouldn't, but uh, I'm not saying that uh, that uh, it wouldn't cost more money to. Uh, to hire somebody, but but uh, you still uh, you're still going to incur some some monies for uh, for replacing those. Well, which is got is Mike. I, don't, I believe I said this when we talked about this the last time. Let's not make the classic mistake where we, we pave the road and then have the culverts fail and we have to dig up our brand new pavement. Let's make let's make sure we we deal with those culverts, whatever we have to do. How many, how many culverts need to be replaced? I think there's seven or so. Can't really remember off the top of my head. I think there's five, Victor. Is there? I believe so. But we don't need to, I mean, we don't need to get into the nitty gritty of this tonight. I mean, we're not going to not accept this paving grant, right? We've been waiting for this for years. Right. So, you know, my recommendation is we approve the grant. We, we start... You know, we start working on these bids and thinking about how much of the work it makes sense for us to do, what we need to hire out, and make the best deal we can make all around. None, none of this work is going to happen until next spring, correct? Well, they said they'll have. One of them said they'd have it done by June, something, fifteenth of June. Next year, though. Yes. Yep. Right. So we have time to. We have time to work on this. Wouldn't you have to have most of your culvert work done this year? You're not gonna, you're not gonna get out there in uh, April and do that. I don't. Know, maybe. What do you think, Steve? What do you want? To do? Steve asked me to read these numbers from Hutchins. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, reclaiming is total twenty-seven, seven hundred and seventy-seven and twelve cents. Paving. Center Road, 
One is 24 feet, one is 26. Okay, 20, one is 24 feet. I don't know. It is $274,022. And the other one is $251,304. So do you add, is it one or the other? Yeah, yes. one, one or the one. other. So it's one or the other. So I assume that the one that's more expensive would be the wider base. And just for clarification, I asked Shane to when he got that quote to ask to find out what it would be for that extra two feet so that we can possibly put in a bike lane or walking lane down on center road. We've got a pretty good opportunity to do it. And I think we need to figure out how to do it, but that's that's why the two different prices. Do it. Yeah. Great thought, Eve. There are a lot of bikers on that road these days. Yeah. A lot of walkers too. And a lot of walkers, yep. And we have our Sarah on that road over there. Dorinda, do you know how much money is on our paving fund right now? I don't. I should have looked it up, but I didn't know that was going to come up. I don't remember how much is in there. Well, we don't. I mean, I guess, I guess what I'm saying, guys, is we need to approve this grant, right? Yes. Yes. And yes. We've got to figure out. We've got some work to do to figure out the figure out the rest of it. But I I just feel very strongly. I would hate for us not to do the culverts, and I don't know where we where we take it from in the budget, or what we give up, or what we have to do to do that. But when we're finally going to fix center road, let's fix it so it's right and it's going to be right for a while. And if that means if that means a mud season mitigation or something else has to be postponed, maybe it has to be postponed. But let's okay. see. I'm the the, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, of the uh, paving grant, it holds 175,000. All second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, any further uh, any further discussion? It's been moved and seconded to approve the grant. But Phil moved and who seconded? I did. Let's see second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Aye. Is is there only room for one signature? I think so. Yeah. Can you do? Can you guys designate somebody to sign? I think Liz is our designated. Uh, okay, signing. and Liz will be designated to sign. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> you know, does it only need one signature? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay, our match is supposed to, I'm just, I'm, I looked this over the other day and I'm looking it over again. Our match is supposed to be 20%. So we're going to be in it. We're going to be in it for more than, uh, more than 20%. I would say. So just for my information, did, how does the state come up with that money? Is it just so much per mile or is it, how do they, how do they come up with that number? Okay. It's based on the on the, the uh, you quoted them for uh, for uh, 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 for the work to be done. I, I believe it's you know for the paving and for the uh, reclamation. Yeah, but it's it's an estimate that we got, or did they come up with that number? I think they. I think they the state has their own formula. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. So they pay. They pay so much for paving, and whatever it is beyond that is on us. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's what I remember. Thank you. Well, what uh, on that the quote that Steve gave us that doesn't include McCullough Hill, does it, Steve? It didn't sound like it. Doesn't include McCullough Hill, does it? No. It's strictly Center Road. Strictly Center Road. Right. Okay. Need to do all the road at least to the bridge. Everything across the bridge. Don't need any more. What was that, Steve? I said I think we need to do that section on McCullough Hill Road uh, at least to the bridge. It's right. either that or put it back to gravel. Right. It's really bad and it's rough, and you can't do much with it. Right. No, I agree with you, Steve. Okay. Okay, well, we've got we've got more work to uh, more work to do on that. It's exciting that it's getting done, but as we know, it's going to be expensive, really expensive. Anything else, Victor? I don't think so. Okay, thank you.
Thank you. Hey, Victor, Victor, what about the culverts on uh, McCullough Hill where you're doing the renovations? They're done. Is that what you so mean? You put, yeah, well, I didn't know. I mean, you, you just said you were thinking of putting them in, so they're already done? They're already done, yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Except, for, except for one drive culvert, which we have to try to turn. But we, but but the excavator broke before we could do it. Great. So that that's that that that, that sharp curve with a deep drop to the culvert, right? That section right there. So again, please. I didn't... It's that sharp curve when you're coming off uh, um, East Hill, and you go around the curve, and there's a drop, real deep drop off to the culvert. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. So. <laughs> That's where you're putting up the the railing, or you did? No, no, no railing. Are you getting confused? Did uh, did uh, the only thing I got from that was uh, Linda Prescott wanted, uh, wanted to put uh, guardrail around that corner. Yeah. So did you do that? Or are you thinking of doing that? No, and no. Why? Um, I mean, I've been driving that. That's a pretty sharp curve. Stay on the road. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's, I heard it, that. <laughs> it was a wide, it's a wider intersection than it ever was. We built that. <laughs> extended the culvert. Um, it will change a little bit, Mary, when we, uh, when we do our graveling there, we will build that side up a little bit. We haven't, uh -huh. we haven't put the gravel on the road yet. Yeah. Or better. Mary, just 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 a just a thought for what it's worth. The problem with the problem with guardrails, they're expensive to install and they're expensive to maintain. So the minute we start putting in guardrails, we're gonna get requests from all over the place to put in guardrails. We need to we just need to be careful and only do it where it's really necessary. Okay. Just asking. I hear you. Thank you. Okay, we ready to we ready to move on, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. Let's move on. Review and approve minutes of the June fifteenth, twenty one select board meeting. Is there a motion? Steve moves. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I mean, I think I wasn't there for the you were, you, I think you weren't the one before that, right? I don't know. <laughs> no, you were there this one. It was the one what? before you weren't. Well, yes. Where was well, I okay. <laughs> well, I you know you abstained in the last vote when you voted at the, the 15th for the meeting before. Okay. I just have no recollection of the document. Well, all right, all right. So I approve them. Okay. Okay. Well, we have enough people to approve them, so we're good. Okay. Correspondent, Sarah. Well, actually, all the correspondence has been taken up, was taken up at the Planning Commission meeting, but we also have uh, our collector of delinquent taxes. Uh, Dave Smith is here. He's got his, he's got his own correspondence. Yeah. Dave? Hi, everyone. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Uh, first, let me, let me apologize. I, the date on this letter is incorrect. It should read today's date, July 7th or 6th, rather. And I just wanted to give you all a quick update that um, I sent some names off to our lawyers to begin the process of tax sale. Um, I did this kind of as soon as we had a, a good reliable list on uh, June 10th. And we sent six names. Since then, three, um, three taxpayers fortunately have settled their accounts. They paid all the money they owed. And um, just for a little idea of what I did, um, I've been kind of paying attention over the last year. We didn't do any tax sales in fiscal 2020, um, partly because I was just very new and kind of figuring out how it's done, mainly because it was 2020 and it just didn't seem like the time to do it. But um, there are some people that have been carrying their debt over the course of a year and just observing them and seeing that they haven't really been making any progress and maybe it's the best thing to do is, is to start this process. So um, we now have three names. Um, 
they've been sent to care and they have until the day after tomorrow. Um, otherwise, then the tax sale gets gets posted in the newspaper and the process begins. You got to read them out loud. Okay, their names are Tammy, Tammy and Richard Horman of 51. What? Okay, of uh, 51 Daniels Farm Road. Um, I have to sift through this because I have all the names here. Portal LLC of 17 Portal Road and Donald Pierce of 53 Lower Sunnybrook. He's the one who just passed away, right? Yes. He's dead. Yeah. So Is he, he's Middlesex Electric or no? Different, different one. Yeah. Okay. So that's really, I just wanted to let you all know that process is going on. What's the total amount, Dave, of delinquent taxes right now, roughly? Uh, I don't have that information in front of me right now. Just roughly? Do you, you mean the whole, the whole yeah. bigger picture? Yeah. Um, you know, I can run off and get that for you in a minute. That'd be all right. That, that's all right. It would be good to know at some point in time. As of June 8th, which was a couple of days before his report, the total was a hundred and forty-eight thousand seven hundred and eighty-six. You could take up twelve thousand of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's been a few that's come off of this, but rough numbers here, you know, somewhere between probably 125 to 100. And is that normal every year? Is, or is it it's higher than usually average? high right at the end of the year, and people seem to work it down by by December. You've got people who've started okay. to, in the past, I mean, that was the way I found it, but last year, it really added a whole different thing. And I can't remember because of COVID, did we take away the 8% penalty in during yes. 2020? Yes. We did. For 2020 yeah. tax, for 2020 delinquents. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's it. Any other, any other correspondence? Nope. Thank you, Dave. You bet. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dave. Considering hiring a handy person to make repairs at the town hall action possible, Sarah. I just want permission to be able to hire to go look for somebody to uh, do handy to do repairs at town hall. Like what kind of repairs? Well, for example, that uh, hinge right there, that yeah. fire door was removed by a certain select board member and never replaced. Oh. If it's closed, somebody, a lawyer in town, not my husband, has threatened a lawsuit. Okay. So um, I need. Uh, we've got the elevator upstairs has a faulty latch. We have things like broken broken windows that need to be repaired, just little things all around yeah. the place. I just need to be able to call somebody when we have like broken stair rails. Be able to do that. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to tell us all the rules. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we don't need to make a motion, do we? No, no, no. But I wanted to get your approval. I didn't. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if you were going to say. You know, it's no. your. It's your. You. The well, select oh, board's no, over. We're getting you a new town hall. You haven't heard. <laughs> The select board is a, in his is in charge of overseeing town hall of the yeah. the town right. building. So I wanted to get your permission before I I just jumped ahead and. You got my yeah. approval. Yeah, me too. When you decide to when you decide to add on a third floor, be sure and let us know. Okay. Or air or air conditioning on the second floor on the first floor. <laughs> exactly. That's what Dorinda said to me. Yes. Make sure they're That's insured. Gone. Okay. We have good news on the CV fiber thing. If you're willing to get oh, yeah tell us who that's true yeah. do are you guys uh mary's just looking <laughs> hi mary i'm um, i'm listening okay. go ahead this must be slow all right so we have two people interested in the cv fiber board do you want to do this phil okay phil does not want to do this we have uh dave lawrence who i think you guys have spoken oh, yeah. about in the past he is um he has been deeply involved with the internet since before there was a commercial internet. He's a software engineering architect at Salesforce. He's been a regular participant in internet governance issues over three decades, including such bodies as ICANN, things, NANOG, RIPE, and IETF, blah, blah. Um, and he's uh, served on the board of DNS, 
hyphen OARC, a nonprofit organization for the domain name system operations community. He is a remote worker for 25 years and has a significant interest in rural broadband in our area. He's a guy. Yeah. yeah, he's a guy we're thinking. And then also, do we need a backup? Do you need a? Uh, well, I, well, I don't know. Yeah, we need. Then we also have Wendy Freundlich. She wrote and said uh, she's interested in the CV fiber board. She has been suffering with poor internet for years, is incredibly frustrated. Her skill set is communications, public speaking, and event organizing. She'd be happy to be helped in any way I can. So considering that Lowry doesn't want to uh, take over the, the backup position, um, it looks like we may have a candidate and a backup. Yeah, I would great. definitely say Dave is the candidate. Yeah. And Wendy and would be, be the backup. Can we all go to the meeting? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So great. Perfect. So do you guys want to make a motion on that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so, 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 Bill moved so that I'll David and, 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 and Liz seconded that David Lawrence oh, is so the middle sex right. representative. Yeah, so understand first. it. Lowry said it was really complicated when you jump into the middle of it, it's not intuitive. And, uh, and uh, Wendy Freundlich is the alternate. Yeah. I assume there's some paperwork we got to sign, right? I think you just probably need to say, let's, let's, yeah. uh, someone Thank make you. a motion. Yeah, Phil moved and Liz seconded that uh, name uh, appointing David Lawrence as the Middlesex representative for the CV Fiber Board and Wendy Freundlich as the alternate. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Great. If you oppose, motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Um, we need to approving and signing. So oh. this is this is weird. Uh, I got a call from the state of Vermont. Um, they just need. I said that the board had already approved the the that Jason Merrill had had uh, was the was the fire warden, and he said, "Well, we just need sec select board signatures." <laughs> so it's kind of you guys have already nominated him. I did call Jason and double check with him, and he said, "Yes, he wants to be that." So um, you just said it's just a matter of signing the form and I can print it out. I thought I had it with me for some reason. I may think it's gotten paper clipped into something else um, that uh, the guys here can just sign it. That would be great. Yep. Good. Okay. Dorinda, you've got enough uh, approvals on your orders? Uh, they're actually signed in person, Peter. <laughs> hey, hey. I, I did give you my approval. Yours came through by email, but we've got three signatures hot on the paper. Okay. So, um, just so there's no misunderstanding, our intent is to meet in person now whenever possible. I thought we had decided we were going to wait until Labor Day, but I guess we... It's not up to us. It wasn't, it changed when they sent out that notice. Yeah, it's not, we don't have that, we don't have that ability unless you're a separately chartered town and you want to just fuck it. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Mm -hmm. I thought we agreed we were going to have in-person meetings for guests. We would have somebody at the town hall. I did not think we agreed that we were all going to show up at the town hall. That's my confusion. So is it everybody's intent? That we are now having in person meetings? Yes. Yeah. And if for some reason it's really hard to get into the in person meeting, we can stay home and do it. But in general, we should try to be here. Okay. Like if it's All bad right. weather, we can cancel it, but we can say it's via Zoom. Yep. But our intention, our intention is to keep the Zoom link as an option, right? Yes, it is. And I will be, unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm going to miss at least one meeting in uh, in August. I'll be here for the meetings in July. Yeah, and then I, yeah, um, but I mean, I, I I probably can zoom in from wherever I am. But I just wanted to make sure I knew what the ground rules were. So that's fine. And we're going to so work we have a meeting week. next. We have a meeting meeting next week. Correct? Is there another meeting in July? Yes, there's a meeting, the meeting next department. week is the meeting with the fire department at the fire station, and that's definitely in person. And that's on the 13th at 6. Correct. And, and then, then we're going to we have a meeting on the 20th as well at 5 at the town office. Yep. Yes. Okay. I've got one yeah. other thing to bring up real quick. Um, back to the ARPA money. 
is there going to be any kind of discussion, um, public discussion or anything like that as mm -hmm. to the, the intentions to, or is there more research to be done or what's the scoop on that? Didn't we agree that we were going to have an information meeting at our July 20th meeting, I believe? But it is? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll know, we'll know more by then. I mean, the, the other just quick item I had for tonight is, is there any update, Phil, on what's uh, what's going on? Right. Okay, I, I, I missed some of that. I, I'm just I'm just wondering, so have we, have we given that uh, memorandum of understanding to Rob Halpert? Have we approved it or we, what, what are, where are we? What are we doing? It's with Rob, and um, I think he was away for a few days, so he just got back to me, and he said he's digging into it. It's rather complex, um, and he'll be back in touch. He certainly will be back in touch before our, the meeting on the 20th, which is, I think, when we thought we would have a open kind of forum discussion about this. Right. So when I read it, and I and I didn't read it today, I read it I read it a a week ago. I believe it says in there that we are required to turn over the money within 15 days of when we receive it, which could be any day. So, but we haven't executed anything. So right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, is it 15 or 30? I thought it was 30. I don't yeah, um, it was 30. I'm just going. I'm just going from memory. All all I'm saying is. We're, we're on track to have our ducks in a row, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, before you go, uh, Peter and Mary, yeah, the, the state requires um, that uh, we, I need, well, Peter, I need your signature. So could you just, I'm just going to leave this form for you out here so you can sign Jason Merrill's reappointment for the state of Vermont. Okay. No problem. Because it has a designated chair right there. So. Yeah. So, what about do I need to do anything, Sarah? Oh, go ahead, Mary. Well, if you want Sarah to, you can, come, you can. If you want to, you can come down and uh, sign it. That would be good. I mean, I'm in town, so I can sign something. If Peter, are you in town or no? No, but I will be tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to come down tonight. No. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, you are in town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my car, but I'm going home after this. <laughs> I got up and drove him up. <laughs> so just just quickly, and, and I apologize for this, but has anybody heard anything, any conversations, any any rumblings from the folks at the fire department? I've heard nothing. I'm surprised. Oh, can I ask these guys something? Uh, these guys. Wait a minute. Well, uh, did, did anybody hear anything from them? No. 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 Okay. All right. Um, did this meeting, this meeting on the 13th, do you, uh, the listeners would like to uh, have a, have a moment to meet with the board on the 13th. Do you want me to just push them off until the 20th? I don't know if it's some, I don't know if it's an emergency or not, but I didn't know if you wanted these fire department meetings to be just fire department stuff. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. We're going to meet at the fire department. So it would be. Uh... Okay. Awkward to have the listers down there, I think. All right. I'm just if uh it's if it's something that is urgent, urgent, we could all stop by quickly for 15 minutes at the town hall before we went down to the fire station. But I would prefer that we put it off if we can. Is this meeting at 5 p.m. or 6 p.m.? It's at six. Is it six? Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, six p.m. But all I'm but all I'm saying is we could you know, we could meet with the listers at five thirty, quarter of six. I don't know. I don't know what the issue is, so I don't well, know. Well, I'm I'm asking. I'm a, I don't know what the issue is either. They're not telling me. Dorinda seems to have some idea. Is it, it Dorinda? Do you think it's something that can wait? Okay. Um, what was Dorinda's response? Probably. Well, Thinking of something important to ask about these meetings this this month, and it keeps going in my head and out like really quickly. We've got the BCA meeting that may BCA, or may not the yeah, BCA may or may not happen. That's August third, right? And we haven't heard back yet. We have not heard that. back. Okay, was that supposed to be today? No, no I yeah. no I screwed oh. up. I just needed to warn it by today. Right. 
Oh, I needed okay. to warn it by actually last week. So I, I got, I warned it by last week. I hope it doesn't so, happen. I know. Yeah. Okay. All righty. That will be, that will be Alrighty. Zoomable, right? That PCA meeting. What'd you say? That will be Zoomable. Yes. All okay. meetings I think are going to be Zoomable. The question is, uh, we, we just need to, um, I mean, I was caught by surprise like everybody else that suddenly the order was lifted and suddenly we had to comply. And uh, I was gonna have family members uh, put something up in, upstairs, but A, the internet is not that great upstairs. We need an extender and uh, there are major family issues going on. So I could not get them to install the classic green TV. And um, uh, you know, it's also hot and gross up there. Um, should we bring a computer though next week to do Zoom? For the fire department yeah oh well i'm gonna bring yeah i think if every, everybody well, has have a, one there they do it might be easier if everybody just brings their own laptops for, for until we get this we have one have the whole problem though just have one with a good sound you know i don't know i don't know how to work that but we just gotta we just gotta gotta mute you know you, so you don't get cross chatter between the computers just everybody's right it's, it's just awkward speak. right it's much easier to meet in person but if we were to make this a um, regular thing, it might be in, worth investing in a camera of some sort that we just have here. Like the owl. Yeah, the owl is yeah. both the camera and the microphone. Right, right. And Waterbury, yeah, water, it out, borrow it out, Waterbury's so. going to loan us one. So oh, we okay. have plenty of people are willing to, Elias has one, but that's a very nice offer. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm not washing All right, anything today. else? This is, why, this is why I suggested that we not make the change until after September 1st. Peter, it's not our choice. I, Sarah, I totally get it. I can't believe that they did it that way, but they did. So in person, if we get a bad variant, then people are getting sick. Again. Well, then what? Yeah, Liz is saying if we get a if we, if the Delta thing takes off, then we're back to yeah. remote. Well, it shouldn't take off much in this state. Nope. No. But you know, we've got all these people coming into our state. Yeah. Massachusetts, it's, it's crazy. The license plates are every other license plate is loud. Anyway, yeah. so. Sarah, yes, sir. Sarah, who yeah. said what so that we so we, we can't have uh, Zoom meetings? You can have Zoom meetings. The, the 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 governor said that from now on meetings must be held in person, and at the very least, you know, you could if there's the old rule was that if you had to for some reason have a remote meeting, you had to have at least one member of the legislative body there. And the other ones would call in and then there were all sorts of protocols around it for example that was when people had to vote by certain you know order saying i or nay but um the the way that uh, the vlct the memo i got from vlct was look at it's lifted you go you go back to work you go back to what you're doing and i also think that we have to sign orders in person now because the order has been lifted so they're not right. taking oh. oh so then we all do have to be here yeah you really do still. yeah okay yeah they're no longer going to be accepted and the other thing is yeah, along that same lines is that we were getting by with having grants signed virtually or attaching minutes and people aren't there that's not flying anymore so that's just the way it's got to go yeah, like the bank wouldn't accept this loan by signatures by. Can you hear that? No. Yeah. No. Okay. That's the way it is. I can see that. Yeah. I had one other question. Yes, Victor. Uh, Steve, uh, did you say earlier you were going to call me? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Just want to make sure. <laughs> so that I heard it correctly. Let me finish that sentence. I want to make sure I heard that that's what you're going to do. So I'll be waiting to hear from you. Okay. <laughs> Just remember, we're all on the same team here. You know, it's supposed to be. Oh. <laughs> I think you got to do something about your lighting, oh, though. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. yeah all right. right well, what? Why don't you? Why don't you give me that extra laptop down there, and then I could use it anywhere. Just for. It's not very good. We couldn't know, use it tonight. Work. We tried to use it tonight and it didn't work. It's a Chromebook and it was just uh, no. You said that was yeah. junk. Well, no, it's only okay well, for what for, for email or something. Right. Right. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So, just just to wrap up, I really think it's important that we continue 
to have the hybrid ava availability at our board meetings. Yeah. yeah. So we just don't do we just don't flip back and say, okay, we're back in the old world and that is what it is and people who can't attend have to call in and, and all that stuff. I I think we need to figure out how to get organized. And initially I think we should, especially in the summertime, uh, do it downstairs because it'll be baking mm -hmm. hot upstairs. So whatever we have to do, I think we need to do it. And I think we should not expect that Sarah's family is going to do it. I don't know how we hire to <laughs> set it up, but I think we need to spend the money to do it and do it correctly and have it so that if we want to move it all upstairs, we can do it. But for the time being, just do it downstairs. Oh, it's my internet that's unstable. All right, we're, we have stable, unstable internet right now. So let's, we should probably adjourn. Adjourn. Let's go. Well, does, does everybody <laughs> agree with that or no? Or is that the plan or no? <laughs> I, I yeah, we like just, you just are, broke up because people are just, just letting me talk and then they just say, oh, okay, we're done. Goodbye. <laughs> no, our our internet here, it, our internet here crapped it out. It was hard to hear you. We didn't really hear anything you said, so <laughs> don't you'll repeat it. Maybe it's just as well. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure we have hybrid capability, and I think we need to hire somebody to organize that and set it up. Is what I said. Oh, yeah. I bet um, Dave Smith. We could pay him a few extra hours to do that. He could probably handle that. You think? Yeah. Well, you know, he's a he's filmmaker. A he's a videographer. So he could, he could yeah. figure it out. He okay. Us, uh, we just need to buy the right equipment. Well, yeah. that's the part. That's, I was. I would have bought it myself. But. And Elias was thinking that we could take our speaker phone uh -huh. and actually, there's some way to set it up with the owl. Oh. So you can get really good audio. Cool. That's awesome. And then we might just need external speakers on the uh, surround sound. Of course. <laughs> well, let's We're let's move forward, forward on this, please. <laughs> Okay, we're, we're working on it, Peter. Well, if you if you need me, I'm happy to try and help, but I'm not the guy to plug the wires in, I can tell you that. Yeah. No, you just keep working on your tractor. <laughs> Peter, I'm gonna drive that to my tractor and bulldoze the town hall. That'll solve a lot of problems. Oh, right, bye bye. What what time do you have? <laughs>